of peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? It's your daily dose of advice on life and money. Check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts. Take these steps in order for your convenience right there. Alrighty. Ramsey Show ending. After show beginning. All right, and I'm just gonna put my links in the chat. And so, why don't you listen to the Rachel Cruz song whilst I do that? What up, Sid? Lovely to be back today. I took yesterday off. Then some more time with my daughter and son. Daughter visiting from the state up north. And she has one of those Minnesota accents a little bit. I think I might have told the story on there before. I was, uh, when she was little, I was pretending to knock down a Lego or something that she built, a Lego set or something like that, that she built. I was pretending to knock it down and she said, do it. Fun times. All right. We ready to sing? I think we are. Me, 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 me. This is for the drum taps. Like all plans, it starts with step one. Thousand buck emergency fund. Step two, you'll pay off all your debt. Except mortgage, we don't do that yet. So pay off your consumer debt. Every one of the charges, from smallest to largest, Baby step three is next. Full emergency fund of expenses. You stay gazelle in debt. His name is Dave Ramsey and this is his plan. And I hope to meet him. I admire the man. I've messed up in my life, but these steps have made it right. That's why I go, that's why I go, and why I host this after show. If you don't like results you're getting now, you should do the baby steps. And if you want to have financial peace, you should do these baby steps. Now step Four is when you can take a breath and go less gazelle and invest. Step five is to save for your kids. No student loans at all for college. The six is to pay off your home. Step seven, build your wealth and keep it all yourself and You've lived like nobody else. Now you get to live large and now you get to give large. 
His name is Dave Ramsey, and this is his plan. And I hope to meet him, I admire the man. I've messed up in my life, but these steps have made it right. That's why I coach, that's why I coach, and why I host this YouTube show. If you don't like results you're getting now, you should do the baby steps. And if you want to have financial peace, uh, you should do those baby steps. Trumpet, take it home. Live from Columbus. Oh, wait. It's the Ramsey Show after show show. Here we talk about the Ramsey Show, the Ramsey Show YouTube chat, and the people in it, and all things financial and whatever else I want to talk about. I'm your host, Coach Steve Money. I'm a certified Ramsey Solutions financial coach. You can schedule a free consultation assessment with me at calendly.com slash coach Steve Money. The link is at the top of the chat and the video description below. You can email me about anything, yes, anything, Coach Steve Money at gmail.com, especially if you'd like to sing the Baby Steps song. Want to hear somebody else sing it? Either you record it or you can do it live. We can work that out. You can also reach me on Instagram. Add me on the grunt. Coach Steve Money, no spaces. If you'd like to donate to the channel so I can make it better, that is paypal.me slash Coach Steve Money. What up, Jess? Who's that girl? It's Jess. Thanks for dropping by. The Ramsey Show host today on an all new show where people I don't have songs for, unfortunately, but that would be uh, Dave Ramsey, author of Total Money Makeover, and Baby Steps Millionaire, and Ken Coleman, author of From Paycheck to Purpose. And of course, if he worked at a Jew, a, worked at, <laughs> that's a different thing. If he worked at a zoo, uh, the book could be called From Porcupines to Porpoise. I thought of that while he was, while Dave was saying the name of the book earlier. <laughs> Stupid. All right. Uh, huh. Market report. After a brief flirtation, Check the S&P. As you can see, the Russell finished 0.6%. But uh, after a brief flirtation of being up today, as you can see, the little mountain here in the middle there, and then by 2 o'clock it was under again, came up for a little while, but right at, oh, let's see what time that is, about a little, a little before 3.30. Uh, she went down again and couldn't make it back up. I think all the rest of them should be about the same. Yeah, let's check the NASDAQ. NASDAQ least down, other than the Russell, which is uh, positive. But, uh, yeah, the NASDAQ was up longer than the rest of them because it was up higher. So that's why it's only down just a little bit. We'll look at the futures in a moment. Uh, yep, proximity principle, you are correct, Kaylin. That's another uh, book by, I mean, uh, Jess. Screen name is Kaylin. Um, by uh, Ken Coleman. And funnily enough, Sid, the kid, and I do not have a proximity principle because we never see anybody. We don't have friends that work at places and stuff like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, earnings calendar. What's today? The 8th. Uh, so we got a crowd strike tomorrow. That would be what? Wednesday and Thursday. Got Oracle and Rivian. Rivian's a, a electronic vehicle manufacturer. Electric vehicle. 
uh, the next week, Accenture, FedEx, and the Nike. Hopefully some of those companies will be having good reports and won't send the market further down. Uh, interesting. Yale professor lists companies not boycotting Russia, Starbucks and Coca-Cola. All right. Uh, most followed single stocks on the Google. Look at, speaking of the Google, uh, Google owner Alphabet. Uh, staying positive for the day. Check that out. wonder what they did all during the day. Let's see. Let's see what we got for that all during the day. Yeah, they were up all day, or almost all day, since uh, 11.40 a.m. Oh, and there, look, there's your, there is your... Oh, that's right. You only get to see this on single stocks. I was wondering why we weren't seeing this gray line on a bunch of other, uh, on the index funds. And so, but that's why, because they're index funds, not single stocks. All right. Okay. That's something, uh, not, not really that's something Steve learned today, which is a segment, but that's something Steve realized that he should have known already. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, oh, uh, and this is why it's the least down, I guess. Uh, the artist formerly known as Facebook, Meta Platforms, up a percent and a half today. Very nice. And uh, Tesla up 2.46%. So, alrighty. And uh, let's see what the rest of the planet is doing. Uh, mo two, two out of the five index, so mostly down in Europe. Um, mostly down in Asia as well. Again, two out of the five down, and the euro's up on the dollar, dollar up on the Japanese yen, dollar up on the British pound, uh, dollar up on the Canadian dollar, eh? Sorry, and the US dollar up against the Australian dollar, mate. No shrimp on the bobby for you tonight. Uh, let's see, the crypto, our pals in the crypto, uh, Ethereum the most today, and those are mixed as well from the ones that they track here. There are 11 billion different kinds of them, so they can't track all of them, Ob. And Junk is so broke, he can't pay attention, so, or she, I don't know, it could be either. It could be either male or female, or I don't know. You can't tell from the chat how anybody identifies. Um, I think that's it on that. Oh, we didn't see the, uh, let's look for at the after hours. I'll try to look and find a place where it has the after hours in graph form. Instead, let's see. Um, but okay, so it's almost another percent down in the in the after hours trading is the S and P, uh, almost 0.8 percent down. Nasdaq, uh, 0.66 percent down is the Dow. Let's see. They don't have nope. Let's just check while we're here on the P. Do, do, do. That's just the S and P. See what CNN Business has to say about it. They don't have a graphic to show me. All right, I'll keep checking. Somewhere there may be one after our screener for Market Watch. Uh, boop. Uh, that just shows individual stocks. Uh, using futures as an indicator, futures indices, will it show me right there? No. No. Okay. All right. It was worth a look. Uh, this from the New York uh, Junk Confirms Maleness. Uh, this is from the New York Times, the paper of record, uh, perhaps not the website of record, but nonetheless, nytimes.com is that URL. 
Uh, U.S. gas prices hit a high, 4.17 a gallon. And where is that? In the New York? Or in the Cali, I would assume. Which we were informed today in the Ramsey Show chat that Cali is, has the best weather. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, that's the average. Oh, average price. Okay. Uh, according to AAA. Surpassing the previous high in July 2008, which was, what was that, 14 years ago? July, so uh, 13 and a half years ago. No, not quite 13 and a half. 13 and a quarter years ago. Um, or no, 0. 0.75. 13 and three quarters a year. I think I think that's the correct math on that. Uh, when the national average was 4.11. Prices are not adjusted for inflation, so keep that in mind if you are wanting to nitpick things. Uh, let's see. Just says inflation is on top of that. Uh, rates for his uh, Russia stuff. I'm trying to stay out of war stuff, but uh, Twitch withholding payments for Russian streamers. Uh, streamers thought the sanction would happen, but not so quickly. Uh, let's see, and do they have pay out to the financial institution associated with your Twitch account have been blocked as a result of the sanctions. Okay, so, oh, so that's why it is. They don't have a problem with the individual person, but they can't pay it to that financial institution. So, let's see, are they saying to go to other, um... Email added that Twitch could appreciate how frustrating and difficult this is. Yeah, imagine if you could, were making your living from that. How much that would suck. Uh, that if streamers could not provide an alternative financial institution, the PayPal, the company still would do its best to pay streamers as soon as that's permitted. PayPal was seen as the last remaining option, but as the Washington Post points out, its service has now also now gone offline in Russia. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe they could, like, put it, I don't know if Twitch would put it in, like, a Bitcoin wallet or something like that. I don't know. Don't know what they can do about that. I'll have to say, I'll keep an eye out if I, if I come across that. Uh, this is from the Wall Street Journal, WSJ.com, Visa MasterCard, prepare to raise credit card fees, which will not affect many in this, uh, viewership at the slightest uh let's see oh i can't read the full story that's okay vc inc and mastercard inc are preparing to increase the fees that many large merchants pay oh when they accept consumers credit cards oh so it's not uh the past on although that may happen the fee increases delayed during the past two years because of the pandy are scheduled to kick in next month according to people familiar with the matter and a document Viewed by the Wall Street Journal. All right. Don't know if you could read that last point there, but I could. I am nearsighted. Don't need my glasses to see the monitor, which is 12, maybe 12 and a half inches. I'm not 12 and a half. Uh, maybe, um, maybe 18 inches. Maybe not quite. Something like that. Between, uh, yeah, between 12 and between a foot and a foot and a half. What else we got? Um, this from the nice graphic there. Look at that. Look at that with all the cursors. That's so fun. Um, re uh, this from where is that? New York Times. Again, reality intrudes on a utopian crypto vision. The cryptocurrency boom has spawned uh, enterprises democratically governed by a community of users. I don't know how much the users really have uh, say-so over it, but all right. or that's the theory. Making it work has been much messier. Okay, I guess that's their point. Uh, American Crypto Fed is a new kind of company spawned by the advent of cryptocurrency, one that claims in a way not to be a company at all. There are no owners, officers, or employees. According to its status, stated plan, instead, American Crypto Fed is a decentralized, autonomous organization 
that is supposed to be steered automatically by computer code and governed by a community of users who vote on the proposals with crypto tokens. Okay, there was still somebody that started it. There's still somebody that wrote the computer code. So I can appreciate what they're trying to say there, but there's people involved. Um, to the proponents, these types of ventures known as DAOs are a new model for commerce, one that could dem dem democratize business enterprises and break the hold that big tech and other entrenched middlemen have over innovation in the information age. Already a rapidly growing number of these upstart organizations have emerged online, including financial services, operations, news hubs, and social clubs. That rhymes. News hubs and social clubs. That'd be a good name for a, a band or an album. Uh, but they are... Don't hate him, just don't like him. Who are we talking about? Oh, people hating on Ken. I see. I see. I'm not hating on Ken. It's just, I, it's just, um, uh, Sid doesn't like him, she says, and, uh, it, uh, it, uh, she doesn't put effort into her lack of affection. Affection might be the wrong word, right? I would agree. It's just, it, it, let, some of the stuff he says just doesn't apply when you don't, when you're not in a situation where you talk to a bunch of people and you're friends with a bunch of people, you know, in a town that you're in, that kind of thing. The proximity principle, principle stuff um, doesn't work. I mean, it would it would work if you would actually try to like seek out people that work somewhere you wanted to work and be friends with them first and then do that, I guess. But, you know, not running into people. Like I've, uh, I've been here sometimes, sometimes I will be at my job and I will, uh, physically see maybe the owner a couple times a week and maybe one client that comes in the office. Most of it's remote work. Um, so at this point, so, and I'm not, I'm not from here. My, old, uh, ex-wife is from here. So, uh, she got all the friends in the divorce. They were already, already hers anyway. Uh, so, and the ones I've had for making, uh, from a working places, uh, have over the years, they, every single one of them have moved out of town. Well, from the last um, last um, couple of businesses I've worked, not at uh, not at uh, the most recent one, Menards. Uh, there's still people here that that uh, they still live here. All right, DAO. It stands for something like data something or something like that. Let's look it up to see what that means. I'm surprised they didn't. Um, um, Decentralized autonomous organizations, DAO. Effective and safe way to work with like-minded folks around the globe. Think of them like an internet native business that's collectively owned and blah, 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 blah. Do, 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 do. Where were we? Okay. Uh, we were probably done with this. I was just saying it's, it's hard to, hard to do that. Uh, it's hard to like implement what they, are doing the problem is because uh, you can't, or at least yet, and you know, I mean, and that'll be interesting when we can, but they can't tell a computer just create this, and the computer already knows how to do it. You have to write all that code, so that means people uh, have to be involved in it. So, you know, I mean, and who's going to pay? Like, if it's going to be a uh, if it's going to be an organization, if it's going to like, especially if it's going to make any money, it's going to have to be, you know, somebody's going to have to pay those things. Somebody's going to have to be in charge of it for um, 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 taxing purposes, for uh, regulation, et cetera, et cetera. So and for now, federal regulators have little 
clear legal authority to oversee these entities unless a DAO appears to be violating securities laws. So until, until I guess until they do, I guess they're fine. Doom, doom, doom. May select leadership groups or hire staff. And so then you would have staff and leadership groups. So uh, major decision-making powers left to the members, ensuring in theory that their choices serve the majority of participants. So, yeah. So it's, it's just difficult to do, apparently. And of course, which is the one thing that, you know, crypto is supposed to be, it's supposed to be, um, you know, not traceable, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but government do take a bite and it wants its bite of those uh, crypto transactions. So uh, they are coming. They are coming. CNBC. What does that say up at the top there? Boom, boom, boom. Prices in the oil. I missed the top of that. Is it going to repeat? Uh, not yet. All right. So this is from CNBC, Google, there it is. Stock futures are lower as we saw as investors continue monitoring rising commodities, prices, and the ongoing Ukraine war. Uh, okay. Google to acquire cybersecurity form Mendiant for 5.4 billion. This is the way. Uh, it's a little Mandalorian reference for you there. Uh, key points, the search giant said it will pay $23 a share for the publicly traded company, which was founded in 2004. If the deal goes through, Mandiant will join Google's cloud computing division. And Google down three points today. Oh, that's after hours. Down 0.12%, down $3.09. My mistake there. I don't think I have anything else from this. Located in Mountain View, California. Deal expected to close later this year. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Just, just understands and disagrees with. The yeah proximity principle part, which is the name of the book, so that's basically the whole thing of of that one, the one thing. I mean, certainly he has good advice. Uh, in some areas, it just may not apply to everybody. Unlike the baby steps, which you can do whether you're smart or stupid, if you just follow them, even the smart people that think they could come up with a better plan, if they still follow the baby steps, they would still be successful. So. Oh, let's see. This is from vice.com. Nice little picture of a prime vehicle being crushed. Uh, and this from Motherboard. Motherboard section of Vice. Add nothing to my name. Amazon delivery companies are being crushed by debt. Across the country, Amazon delivery service partners, the small businesses that exclusively deliver packages for Amazon are going tens of thousands of dollars into the negative. And uh, they obviously don't follow Dave's advice because in Dave's advice, just like you personally, you don't go into debt to start or fund a business. So... You know what you do, what you would do in that case if your costs uh, out. You know if you if you were trying to grow if you tried to basically they I guess they grew too fast uh, and you're trying to think oh well if I go into this debt and then I'll be able to deliver all these packages and then I'll make money well as you can see in these cases it doesn't work um, and this is one of those articles where they tell you like instead of Telling you the facts they tell you about individual stories. Uh, and Jim, an Amazon delivery contractor in Boston who operated a fleet of 30 Amazon van bands. Uh, the caller identified themselves as a representative of Amazon Network Health Group. Informed Jim that Amazon was terminating his contract to deliver package, in effect closing his business. No rumors, no business coach saying, hey, you need to plan for this, nothing. Who has to remain anonymous. 
because he wants to stay in the delivery business and fears retaliation from future clients. Uh, this would be like someone walking your business and shutting it down and saying, we don't care, you can sue us. I'm a pimple on the butt of an elephant when it comes to Amazon. Yeah, well, let's see. 16 months earlier in March 2020, Jim had packed up his life in the Midwest, said goodbye to his wife, four kids, and dog, and headed east with his two oldest sons to open a last-mile delivery company in an Amazon delivery station in downtown Boston. Typically, a handful of contractors operate their businesses out of Amazon's last-mile delivery station, the company's, company's smallest style of warehouse. Amazon's delivery service partner program advertising on its website that its partners can expect to make up to three th up up to three hundred thousand dollars annual profit with as little as ten thousand dollars startup investment. Uh, Jim came program with MBA, nearly twenty years of experience working in the Midwest for D O oh, Airborne Express, later acquired acquired by DHL. Sons and he would follow the American. Can dream to be a small business. Uh, took a leap. You're right. And taking the leap uh, needs to be done without you spending a lot of money. And especially money you don't have. So let's see. Did he even have the startup cost or did he borrow the startup cost? It probably doesn't say that. Jim, 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 Jim. They delivered 3 million packages uh, in whatever year he's talking about. Uh, Amazon delivery companies can lose money from both undelivered packages and packages not delivered to a person. We were damned if we delivered, damned if we didn't. Well, I mean, that's, you know, again, that's the thing you, you, if it's something that, you know, that kind of thing you would uh, want to know before you started that business. You know, I mean, that's like, that's crazy that uh, the the client can still get the package but the delivered person not paid for it just because the person didn't sign for it. But Amazon wants you to leave it too. Yeah, that's, that's you know. Uh, yeah, that's what you got to look into. And that's, um, I don't know if you have any legal recourse on that. But uh, Amazon has uh, better lawyers than he does, I'm sure. Uh, guys still contacting him about W-2s and telling me they're still trying to find work. They had families, they trusted me. How can you be, treat people that way? So, let's see. 16 months later, after Jim received the call, giving two weeks notice for him to wind down operations, he noticed it by his staff, mostly drivers who earned close to Boston's minimum wage. So 16 months later, after he received the call, giving two weeks notice for him to wind down operations, that's when you need to tell people, that's when you need to shut the doors, basically. I mean, he was. I'm sure what he was doing was the same way Dave did when, when the bank called his note, uh, on his uh, on when they called us notes, on the houses that he owned. Um, he fought for years before filing bankruptcy to try to pay everything off. He paid and he, and he paid everything off, but a small portion of it. I can't remember. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was over 75%. It might have been 90% even that he actually paid off. So he only owed them a little bit. And they finally, um, he finally declared bankruptcy once uh, the day before they were coming to get furniture from the house. Oh, yeah. All right, let's see. Bum, 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 bum. Screenshots. Um, reveal widespread anger and despair over the mounting cost of van repairs over the past year. Everything's gone up. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, this is, I mean, this basically is, uh, you know, once you find out that you're not getting paid for that, that's when you got to readjust what you're doing. When, you know, when you find out that, oh, I'm not going to be making as much money. So even if you, there was no way to find out ahead of time, the first time it happened, maybe the first time you let it go, but then the second time it happens, then you have to realize that hey, I got to do something here. Got to got to pivot and do something else, or you know, not expect to be paid sometimes for that. So, but that is that is weird that even if the delivery is actually made, but nobody signs for it, that. Um, 
that they don't get paid for it. That's that is kind of crazy. Uh, but that was a basic, basically the deal for that. They go talk about other people's uh, stories. There's some. Oh, look, there's some uh, Amazon paperwork. Looks like the uh, company. There's a graph for AJ and Troy. The graphic. All right. Well, I mean, this has got a whole bunch of stuff in it, uh, but we have already we've already found out enough uh, the, about the situation to know that it's not a good one, and it's not that it's not a good one. I don't think Dave went into any more debt after after he found out, you know, trying to get out of it. But these people certainly certainly are certainly taking out debt and you know allowing. Allowing business uh, services that they are paying for, allowing uh, it to be like just invoice to them, which makes debt as well. So, alrighty, is that it? Yeah, what time is that? All right, let's do a couple ready questions. So this is how you do it. You go to what is it? reddit.com and this is men and females i think was something that from some little cringe humor yeah a little cringe humor from uh sydney recommended to kelly today so that's how you do it is reddit.com slash r slash and then the exact name of the subreddit you can also search for the subreddit on the search right up here you could search if you wanted to find out like you know what your particular subject matter is but ours today is reddit.com slash r slash dave ramsey again not run by ramsey solutions like the uh what is it on facebook the baby ramsey baby steps uh group that's on there uh this is run by fans all right, building a dream. This from Queasy Educator, 5205. Building a dream. Hopefully this is not sad. I'm going to end sad. Uh, I'm an engineer going through the ups and downs of, on the lack, of the lack of financial literacy in our country. I've always been passionate about cars, but during high school made a decision to sell the money pits and focus on professional life. Cool. Now I am making 75k a year. All student loans have been paid off and stepping into baby step three. Excellent. It feels as if I am in a space where I can start my dream build, but I am not fully debt free. Still owe about 85k on my 170k condo. Okay. Right now my BMW is sitting in my parents' garage, but they have given me a 12 months heads up that they will be moving out of the area. I can't tell if I'm in a position to start and finish this build. You're not. So I started with formulating extensive parts list and currently sitting at a 25K project budget. Comparing to Dave Ramsey rules of thumb for car buying with paint and everything, I should allow myself a 35K project budget. My question is for the group, am I in financial system where I may have a take on this build? Should I attempt to eat at the project in chunks as opposed to dumping the money all at once? You are not. You have to get your full emergency fund before you do anything fun like this. You, you're you not, this is a, just a project. This is a toy to play with. Uh, you already have a car that you're getting around in, presumably. Um, but yeah, so you're, yeah, you're not ready to do that. I mean, maybe within, if you have 12 months, maybe you can get that fully funded emergency fund up and then hit it in chunks like um, um, blah, 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 cash flow it as you go along so maybe you could do that he's got the spreadsheet link there right there on Google Docs props to that um, but uh, yeah yeah no toy while you don't have a full emergency fund and that would be a similar decision as you made in high school to sell the money pits and focus on professional life that would be an adult decision and that's what this would need to be boom 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 
Oh, let's see. This is from Supinator or Supinator 1. Supinator 1. Uh, baby Steps 4, 5, 6 Flare. A What Would Dave Do question, which pretty much is all of them on here, I think. Some people, though, they do ask questions and then they immediately say, I know Dave says this, but what do you guys think of that? Meaning, just give me justification for doing what I want to do. As a business, when is allowing your customers to use debt to buy your products morally wrong? I would say never. That's on them. That's on them. I mean, if you're if you know if you're taking cards, you don't you know you don't know if that is a Visa debit card or a Visa credit card. I mean, maybe maybe the business finds out later somehow, or they're different somehow. But they start with the same letter, all Visa, including Visa debit cards. Uh, start with a four, all Mastercards, including Mastercard debit Mastercards. Uh, start with a five. So now uh, American Express. I think I think even American Express has um, has an account where you can where it can just be like a debit account, American like American Express checking or something like that. So yeah. Oh, and service. Oh, services like Affirm and Afterpay will increase your revenue by letting people who don't have the money up front. Yeah, I don't know that I would do that necessarily. Um, yeah, Dave probably wouldn't be down with that at all. All right, so, uh, and they want to know why Dave doesn't do this and why he doesn't do that. I, I, I don't know unless Dave, it comes out of Dave's mouth. I don't know what Dave is thinking about anything. So unless he has said it or written it down, I don't know what he's thinking about it. So. I won't speculate on that, uh, but like as as for me, as far as you know, um, if you're if you're going to be taking the cards, uh, you got to take the chance that they're going to be having credit cards. This afterpay stuff like that is bad news. George Camel has a uh, a uh, fine print on it. Oh 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 oh, the fine print. He has a fine print podcast on that. It's called I think. I think it's called, uh, I think it has a firm and afterpay in it. Uh, Klarma, I think. Klarma is what it says. An after a firm and Klarma, I think. Uh, and so you can check that out on the YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, Sid, Sid says do a cash discount. Uh, Stealth Hawkeye, Baby Step 2 Flare. How much money are you throwing at your snowball every month? This is a, you know, I mean, that's fine, but a lot of people are very, in my opinion, too concerned about what everybody else is doing. Now, sometimes it comes from, a, uh, I guess, a good place, like wanting more information. Like a lot of times we'll get, how much should I have in my emergency fund? Well, emergency fund is your full emergency fund. Baby step three is uh, three to six months of your personal expenses. So yours aren't going to be the same as mine. So my three month emergency fund isn't going to be the same amount as your three month emergency fund. And definitely not if you and or, or you and your spouse uh, are choosing to do a six month. So, uh, you can't really go by that. Um, how much money you're throwing at your snowball would depend on the, uh, uh, amount of income you're getting and definitely your cost of living in your area, et cetera, et cetera. I know everyone has different amounts of debt and different household incomes. I just want to get a lot of different perspectives on how we all deal with our debt. So it'd be any, any number. So, but this person brings in 110, his wife and he, my wife and I, he says, bring in around 110K of income. Debt is around 80 to 85. I'll be paying off my car this month. We'll roll on the next credit card earnings. If comfortable, please share your monthly income too so I can see the full picture. Uh, and, of course, he's not saying how much he's putting on his debt.
So, and he even edited it later with uh, if you're comfortable, we'll share your monthly income too. Oh, uh, let's see if he, if anybody asked him. I feel like people get too crazy with the selling there. Oh, never mind. I thought there was going to be something else. I feel like people get too crazy with com comparison. Uh, the o I'm looking for OP in here to see if he happened to mention it. But yeah, he didn't say how much, uh, how much he was throwing at his, which I find very interesting. All right, yeah, nobody, he didn't do that. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Best thing to do with that would have said, I'm throwing blah, blah, blah in there. So, baby steps in order again for your convenience. Out of order would make it probably more, worse, much more confusing. All right, graduate, graduating debt-free hour. Oh, a theme hour. They had a theme hour for people graduating debt-free. This is Ray Fusion 7. Um, I mean, that wouldn't hurt, but I don't know. Interesting. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll run it by the mod. Oh, he tagged uh, G Camel on it. George Camel is on the. Come on. What is the problem? So I guess I don't. Want, if he tagged, if he tagged uh, George Camel on it. Wow, there's a lot of junk on his script. People commenting a lot of junk <laughs> on here. Wow, sorry, did he post any? He hasn't posted nothing. That's probably wise. All right, what mutual fund do I invest into? Good question. Baby step four, Flair Hill Pilgrim Journeyman. 21 hours again. Um... Edit. I'm currently a contract worker, which means I have no company program for investing. I hear Dave say mutual fund gives an average of 12%. How do I find this mutual fund and start adding money to it on my own? All right. So for those of you that don't know, uh, Dave doesn't tell you exactly what mutual fund to get. Um, he recommends manage mutual funds. And he recommends four different categories that further diversify you by having those further categories, those different categories. So uh, you would need at least one of each uh, category and you put 25% of your 15% of your net income, of your gross income. Net is for figuring out mortgage, so you buy a lesser house. Gross is for... Uh, investing, retirement investing, so you invest more. So 15% uh, of gross income would go split 25 different, 25% 25 in each. So split four ways in small cap, mid cap, large cap, and international funds. Now he's not going to tell you uh, what funds. He recommends you get a Smart Vista Pro from his uh, website and they can teach you all about the market and guide you but uh, to, you know teach you how it works and so uh, that, that's what he would recommend on that a lot of people uh, just would like say oh don't do that don't pay an inv investment professional uh, don't you know don't do that just put it in an index fund uh, index fund you're not having as much diversity as Dave wants you to have if you just put it in one index fund. So, but that's the, that's the dealio on that. If you have any more specific questions about that, email me, coachsteedmoney at gmail.com and I'll, I'll answer your specific questions on that. But that's uh, basically the deal. So he said, Dave says mutual funds give, and what he's talking about, he says, what he says is the market gives an average of 10 to 12 percent per year and of course is down this year 
but it's how do I find this mutual fund? There are many, 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 many different mutual funds of which index funds are a part, but the what Dave recommends is index fund for saving for a purchase, which means you have uh, five year, at least five years for saving for that purchase. Uh, and um, manage mutual funds for uh, retirement. Okay, so again, any questions, specific questions you have about that, I can answer coachdmoney at gmail.com or hit me in the chat sometime for uh, on the after show or in, during the Ramsey chat. You can ask in there as well. Alrighty. Is that the, oh, no. Our PFM markets, hear about PFM apps. Mint, Truebill. Um, I've heard of that. I didn't mint a, um, I don't know what that is. Let's see. Mint, Truebill. Oh, does that combine for your like subscriptions? Oh, free budgeting apps. Oh, okay. Okay. What does the PFM stand for? Hmm. Okay, they're budgeting apps. Of course, we'd recommend the Ramsey uh, um, Design One called uh, Every Dollar. Would recommend that as well. Um, in one of those, your bank info would be entered so that it could um, consolidate the transactions. You would get the transaction amounts from your bank info. So you could sync it with that. So you don't have to do that manually saying, okay, that one's paid, that one's paid, that one's paid, like that. It's from Wild Guess 94, 24. So. Oh, let's see. Correct answer for the, uh, to go back, I missed uh, Sid's comment on, on the, <laughs> how much you can throw at the snowball, how much your snowball amount is. Uh, so the correct answer is as much as I can. That's right. But yeah, I, I really find that interesting that he, he wants to know everybody else's, but he's not saying his own. So, all right. Uh, Sid so says she feels like index funds are a bit on the timid side because they are so visible. Well, because they are so visible. Okay. I feel like that reminds me of a story. My wonderful daughter and I were talking to my, who is it? My um, sister-in-law and my ex-wife's boyfriend. And they both have hip problems. And so... Uh, she was talking to them and they were talking about their hip problems and she said sorry um, she said yeah I feel like you guys wouldn't have so many problems if you stretched more Which, you know, I guess would be akin to somebody um, complaining about their weight. And she's like, yeah, I feel like uh, you wouldn't be so bad if you didn't eat as much. So I thought that was really funny. They took it in stride, though. Uh, <laughs> um, Sid is not down, does not approve uh, putting your... Uh, Bank info into a free app. Uh, she says, if you don't, if there's any situation where you don't pay for it, you are the product. All right. That is fair as well. Uh, so, yeah, I would try, um, of course, uh, every dollar. I use a hashtag spreadsheet, though, for budgeting. Uh what does every other caller start their call with Dave, John, George, Ken, Rachel, by asking, can you hear me? Is that just a nervousness, maybe? Chris L. Davis got too much time on his hands. I wonder about that. Of course, I wonder about things, but I don't post them in Reddit to see if other people are thinking about them. 
People should watch Borrowed Future. Absolutely. This is from Luhor OXOXO. Luhore. Luhore, you? No, probably, probably Luhor. I don't know what that means. Um, uh, boom, 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 boom. Definitely. No student loans at all for college. Um, let's see. Okay, to those who have followed, again, worried about everybody else. To those who have followed his advice and paid off all your debts, what is your net worth? Let's see if these 41 people are asking. Debt is essential for a lot. Oh, just not sure debt is bad. As he says, it, debt is essential for a lot of situations. It can be even advantageous if leveraged correctly. But he's got debt-free um, swag here. So, and of course, you know, Reddit rampant for uh, trolling. So, well, just, I was just curious as to how, I mean, obviously, stupid. Uh, I would have just ignored this, but 41 people answered. So, let's see. Don't agree with your leverage statement. Uh, wife in her 30 with $1 million net worth. Also, because anybody could say anything they wanted to on there. Uh, they'd also have less hip problems. They were 20 years younger. That's a That would have been a good follow-up there, Sid. That's right. Uh, let's see. Start several. 2536 found the Ramsey Show podcast in 2014. Network 50K at the time. Now roughly at 900K. I'll spade off with about 400K. 500K in retirement. 401K. Contribution maxed out. Andre. Golden's bill up. Brokerage and other investments. We're in our mid to late 30s. Melodic Coffee, a, a frequent contributor to the Dave Ramsey subreddit here. Uh, net worth 250k in 2016. Paid off all baby t step two debt. Finished baby step three. Amped up four, five, and six. Still haven't finished six. As of the last time I checked in mid-February, my net worth was over one million dollars. They are in the late 30s. Not going to check it again for a few months, so I'm not tempted to change course with my investments. Right? Yeah, you don't need to be checking it for a while. That is that is wise. What about it, coffee? Uh, let's see. P. Tarmigan. We've also seen this Ridge Tarmigan uh, Ridge Trail. Maybe a silent P there. Uh, read the book, Baby Step Millionaire. It sounds like you met a lot here. Dave Ramsey's common sense, conservative, slow and steady, sure way to win with money. No, thank you. Unleveraging. Dave Ish for many years, took FPU in 2015, got on board, finally paid off. So the oh, so this is all people that say that say that are telling him, uh no, this this way works. Your leverage uh advice could go either way, depending on the investment, depending on luck, depending on too many things. So 50 in the hole in debt, started Dave Ish, had about 100K in assets. Uh, then that was 50K net worth then, but uh, 2.5 years later, over 500K net worth. Only low interest debt now. Was debt free for a bit and it was great. Well, then why'd you get into low interest debt then, Demi? All right. Uh, baby step seven won't be exact because it's none of your darn business, but well north of $1 million. Haven't inherited, but graduated, blah, 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 blah. and while it can be advantageous to use debt, it can also go the other way just as easily, which means you shouldn't do it. Debt is not essential and is often used as a shortcut outside of a mortgage for me. So yeah, often used as a shortcut. That's because people want it now, now, now. So yeah, I mean, and uh, some have worked, sure, but there's not enough of a, a good track record that it works like that. 1.3 million, Northwest, uh, 42 years old. Union laborer, started with $265,000 in debt, including the house, paid off in 48 months, retired. So, uh, net worth 700K, approximately five years for this person. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, the person, the poster is not getting what he wants here, I think. I think too many people assume they're exception to the rule and can beat the game, right? Or 
again as the case it was in the chat today more people that says well if you're disciplined and you're basically intelligent enough to do it uh you know that kind of thing so but yep the stats don't lie so don't play the credit card company game Back to Mundo. What time is it? Oh, it's seven oh five. I'm in overtime because I got so excited about that question. Let's see if we got another subscriber. We didn't get another subscriber during the show. How about that? Was it anybody that? Uh, nope, nobody that uh, has a. Somebody has to like have a channel or something, like, or no, have it public uh, in order for it to show up there. As far as a who who subscribed, so got a subscriber. So thank you very much, whoever that was. Um, what are we doing? Oh, upcoming streams. Um, plan on getting up really, really early and doing the Curse of Oak Island no cap recap for this week. Uh, in the morning, so may not. I was planning on doing maybe a draw or thinking about doing a a game. A gaming thing for an hour. I might just go to bed though. Go home and go to bed. We'll see. Uh, but normally, uh, this show, of course, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Ramsey Show After Show Show. Uh, and that starts at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, right after the Ramsey Show video is over. Monday's 8 p.m. Eastern Time, except I didn't do it last night because of family obligations. Uh, tech support with Coach Steve Money. Uh, Wednesday's no set time. It should be, theoretically, it should be early in the morning when I post that. Uh, Wednesdays and Saturday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Old Man Video Gaming. Those are scheduled ones. I often do some non-scheduled ones as well, some bonus ones as well. And at some point, Bella and I will do some more father-daughter video gaming. And when we do that, we will be starting a new game of some type. Alrighty, uh, you can schedule a free financial coaching consultation with me. I'm a Ramsey Solutions certified financial coach. And you just click on that. Uh, the link is at the top of the chat and in the video description and in the uh, right corner of, lower right corner of my YouTube banner. Uh, just click on financial coaching. You click the date, you click the time, and Calendly will let me know. Uh, when you would like that, and I will email you back about the information that I need to correctly assess you. Uh, let's see, PayPal, donations, if you appreciate what's going on here, if you'd like to contribute, um, paypal.me slash coach Steve Money. Um, and Instagram is um, coach Steve Money, no spaces, obviously. Uh, email me, CoachSteveMoney at gmail.com uh, about anything, about financial coaching, about anything on my channel, about video games, about Oak Island, about uh, computer stuff, uh, whatever's on your mind, and especially if you would like to sing the Baby Step song. That would be amazing. So just uh, give me an email and uh, let me know that you'd like to do that. Alrighty. Uh, man, I think that's it. Today was the show number 231. Uh, so since I didn't do yesterday, they're going to be get they're going to get uh, they're off. They're not synced again. As far as starting like Monday would be end in a one and then uh, a one or a uh, six. And then um, the Fridays would end in a um, zero or five uh but now they won't do that they'll skip to the next number so not as easily easy to keep track of but what else we'll deal with it i think yep that's everything all righty so till next time make smart financial decisions every day